If anybody has a question, feel free to ask. I'm going to give you one little tip, because you all answered the men real nice. It says that when a person answers the men, his schar is greater than the person who said the bracha. The gematria, the gematria, the numerical value of the word amen, is the exact numerical value of the word malach. 91. When you say amen, not like... Eh. When you say amen because you really mean amen, amen is the abbreviation of Kel Melech Neeman, El Melech Neeman. I agree, you're right. If you say amen with all the kavanah that you agree, at that moment you create a malach. And this malach comes and stays next to you and guards you, never goes away. So every amen that you say, don't, don't push off an amen, eh, another amen. Every time you hear a bracha, you have to make sure you listen and you understand what's the bracha and you answer with all your heart because right on that point you create a malach. A malach that serves, that guards you all constantly and stays next to you the, the, your, your entire life and then later on also comes to help you. One little thing, this little thing, amen, answering amen. A lot of people they stand in chazarat ashat, chazarat asrats in, in, in time of prayer in the, in the shul, they're playing with their phone, amen, amen. They're not even listening to what they're saying, this is not amen. Halacha calls it amen yatoma, it's, it's, not, it's no meaning. You have to listen to the bracha and know what you're saying, amen to. And the, and the level, the greatness, what you can achieve with one little amen, is you create a malach right on that point. So you already have the first tip of tonight, how to listen real good to any bracha that you need to hear and to say amen with all your kavanah. Yes. How do you know? No, I'm joking. It's very simple to, to explain. He's asking to whoever didn't uh, hear the question that I said, that when I got connected in that light, that I became and felt that I'm this genius. And how come now I don't relate or have this information? It's very simple. <clears throat> when the neshama is in the body, it's very limited to what the body can handle. The neshama, all the neshamot, there are these genius. When the Shema leaves the body, it's a genius. It knows everything. It sees Lokut. It sees godliness. And it knows everything. <coughs> we even know that then, when the fetus is in the mother's stomach, the whole nine months, there's an angel that teaches this fetus Torah. So the Neshama knows everything. We're all the same. But once the Neshama is in the body, and the body is very thick and coarse, then the Neshama doesn't have its Full, fully potential. So it doesn't know everything. It doesn't feel everything. It doesn't relate to everything. That's why we have to learn again the Torah in this world. Because the Neshama is totally pure, per, totally perfect. But the Neshama gets dressed into the Ruach. And the Ruach and the Neshama gets dressed into the Nefesh. And the Nefesh gets, gets dressed into the body. Imagine how many layers. It's almost like we're sitting in this room. Doesn't matter how much the sun is going to shine outside. You're not going to see it, because there are not even windows here. If you're going to be locked in this room for now for a week, you don't know what's day and what's night. There's no windows here. So, but you know there's a sun out there, outside, and you know that the sun creates light. You know everything. But as long as you're in this room and you don't see the light of day, then it's exactly how the neshama, the neshama is in the body. It knows everything, but it can't see because the body is so thick and coarse. So all the information that the Neshama knows, and the Neshama knows everything, not only me. Once it comes into the body, then it's, it doesn't really, it has the capability of knowing it. Besides, that everything the Neshama knows, it's this divine information. And our brain, our Sechel, where the Neshama is dressed in so many spiritual garments, it cannot relate to it. We don't understand anything that has to do with divine information. That's why the sechel, the power of sechel, is being dressed into a, a garment which is called machshava. It's huh? Sechel is the intellect, your mind. So the, the mind of the person is, is dressed in so many garments, so you can kind of relate to this world, but it can't relate with divine information. That's why not me and not anybody else can remember what we see up there. So, when the Neshama leaves the body or when the time of Mashiach will be here, 
וידע, ידע, 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 וכל הארץ ידע, ידע את השם. We're going to understand and see, see godliness everywhere. But up until this point, we have to settle to the little and limited information that we can, keep, we can understand and handle. And if you, you, know, you live your life the right way, and you have a lot of Torah and a lot of mitzvot, then it's, you know, obviously you have what to look. But if you live your life like a rasha, where do you come up with the chutzpah to look to the right, to maybe something is going to be there? You know, somebody, somebody once told me, you know, there's a lot of things that you do that uh, you, even people who are not religious, they do, and it's kind of like a mitzvah, you know, you're, uh, respecting your parents, helping another person. There's a lot of things that you can do that is technically a mitzvah. So, obviously, a lot of things that you do are under the category of a mitzvah. But if a person lives his life like a rasha, like a wicked person, and by, by chance he did some, something good, and then he did it not because of the mitzvah, because he's either going to get paid, or something good is going to happen from it, so he can, has, can, can have the chutzpah and says, oh, can I get the credit for the, mit, for the mitzvah? I did it for the money, or for everything else, but the person is asking to get credit for the mitzvah. So it doesn't work exactly like that. When you're doing a mitzvah, it has to be L'Shem Shamaim. It has to be because Hashem wanted you to do it, not because you're going to get paid. So you can't really ask for credit for something that is falling under the category of a mitzvah if you did it for, for uh, not for the cause of the mitzvah. So I had the chutzpah to kind of look to the right. Like, where did I come up with that, that maybe something is going to be there? <laughs> That's how I felt. But, yeah. How I saw it was just, the, the thing is that how I saw it, there's a place in the Gemara that describes exactly how Malach HaMavet looks. And it really looked like any, uh, when I was trying to look up to, to Shamaim, to look up, it looked like this, like this, a skyscraper, this black thing. The Gemara says that Malach HaMavet Gavoa, Mikan HaDarakiya, Lavush Beglima Shchora, wearing a, a black cape. That, it's kind of how it looked. But the thing is that, it didn't have a physical look how we see things. It's more like in your, in your intellect. It was more like the understanding. But it looked exactly like that, like this wall of darkness. I think it was more the, the understanding what it is. That was one thing. There's a lot of parts that I don't tell in this whole darkness part. But I saw all my averot, all my averot, every avera that a person does, he creates a malach. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So every avera that a person creates, he creates this malach that's waiting for him there. And if some averot that you make, you can create a uh, hundred thousand malachim in one in one little avera. So all these malachim were there, creating this tunnel. How I went through the sides of the, the these these how I said these blades that it felt like ripping me. The, the whole tunnel was like the the these malachim, and I was like squeezed through them. And they were like ripping pieces of me. That was like kind of the vision that I saw. Every, place, every, place our avera. every malach comes to rip a piece off you. Exactly. And there's no words to describe how it looks because you can't say, oh, he looked like this, he looked like that. It's more like in a much more intellectual way. You, are, you more understand and perceive it. So it wasn't that the Malachim were standing there and they had, but had a name tag, Shabbat, or a name tag this. It was more, you have to kind of imagine like a dream, that you understand everything, you know what you're going through, a million times more magnified than a dream, but you just feel it and understand it. Less of a, a vision of it. But the Malach it looked, I, anywhere that I looked was like this huge black wall, scary. In the beginning, like all the malachim were like kind of like stuck on it. You know, the Gemara says that it has ends of enaim, a lot of eyes, but I saw it like these malachim. There's not really, I don't know how to, dis, to, dis, to describe how they looked. Yeah, what about in the Beit the, the malachim that were there? They kind of looked like me. The prosecutors, they kind of looked like me. Just more deformed. How we see in uh, people uh, paint demons with like scary faces. It, when I looked on these prosecutors, they looked like me. Just completely deformed and scary. Because when a person does the Avera and he creates the Malach, it's kind of creating something like a, a father has children, the children look like him. 
Uh, our sins look like us, like more in a, in a metaphorical way, but they didn't look like what we see in movies with horns and fangs and tails. That didn't look like that. It looked like, like a distorted me. But very scary. Yeah. If I saw any other souls, I didn't see anything. I didn't have any permission to see anything or to know anything. I knew that I'm like, yeah, that I, everybody can see me, but I can't see anything. So I didn't see relatives, I didn't see tzaddikim, I didn't see souls, I didn't see anything. And I knew that everybody can see me. It was like this, you know, one-way mirror, like an interrogation room. Everybody could see me, but I couldn't see nothing. Yeah. No. The thing is that uh, essentially after all Siddhar Ishtal Shalut, we do come into many different groups. And you see it all started with all the 12 tribes. We see even from the Torah we were separated for 12 tribes and then we have also the Kohanim and the Levim. In this world there's what's called Chilukim and there's a reason for that. The main reason, the, the easiest way to explain it is the same way that you go now and build a building so the building has an engineer and an architect and the contractor and it has the painters and it has the guy who does the windows and uh, the guy who does the plumbing and the guy who paints the walls and there's many different chores and many different trades. Now you can build a building for half a billion dollars. If the building doesn't have windows or the building doesn't have toilets, the building is worth nothing. So the same way, that's how we are. We hear like each one of us has a, 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 a voda in this world, has a part in this world that he has to do. So one group we see that they're very into praying, one group is very into studying a lot. Well, each group has their avodah. Now it doesn't mean one is better than the other, it doesn't mean one is more smarter than the other, or it doesn't mean one is more right than the other. Each one has his nosach, each one has his way, each one has his, the way of serving Hashem. We see it even in Tziat Mitzrayim, when all the Shvatim, all the tribes left Mitzrayim, a lot of people think that when the sea split, they all went in one, one uh, place. It says that it split 12 places. Each Shevet went in one, one place. So each one of us is being placed in this world according to how we, how we, where we come from. Where Etzim and Neshama, the, the source of the Neshama belongs, and it comes down to be in this world to fix this part of this world. So it doesn't mean, first of all, there is this, a division, let's call it. But the problem in our days, and probably also in history, that instead of working like a very good machine, then we're all working against each other. If you take like exactly the, the analogy that I say with the building, if everybody's working good, or you can see an army. In an army there's the Air Force, there's the tanks, there's the Marines, there's intelligence, there's this and that. If everybody's working together, then it's sliding perfect. But the problem with us is that we're all fighting with each other. I'm smarter than you, my rabbi is smarter than yours, my halacha is more correct than what you're saying. You see from the first day the Jews left Egypt, they already started fighting. Oh, I went to many different places till I found my spot. So I went to one place I didn't feel comfortable, I went to this place I didn't feel comfortable till I found my spot. The fact they told me in Shamaim, okay, you have to be, live your life like a Jew. Because in essence, in the level of Shamaim, we're all the same. We all have to do mitzvot. We have to do it the same. So one person wear, wears his clothes like this. One person wears his clothes like that. One person has the peot this way. One person has the peot that way. One person doesn't have peot. That's already little things that we added here, according to the, how we have to do it. But in Shamaim, in essence, we're all the same thing. There's one definition. There's no... Uh, and each person needs to go to where he belongs. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of people, they become, especially with people who become religious, so they end up being in Breslev, or this ends up being in Chabad, or this one ends up being uh, uh, in uh, Sephardi. A person goes where he belongs, and when you go where you don't belong, you don't feel comfortable. You don't enjoy that shiurim of that rabbi, and you don't feel comfortable in that Shabbat table. And then you go to a different place, oh, it's so nice here, because that's where you belong. And each one of us belongs in a completely different place. And we're all doing the same thing. 
Just in Milemala, you know, the Baal Shem Tov says, Milemala molichim et adam. From above, we're like puppets here. And somebody from above is moving the strings and moving to you, moving you where you're supposed to go. Every person is Milemala being walked to where he belongs. That's why one person goes here, he feels good, he stays there. Goes there, he feels bad, he stays, you know, he walks around. And you see, with people who are born religious, so either they're born exactly where they belong, and they stay there. But you still see, even in our days, that somebody is born here, and he goes to a different Hasidut, or to a different group, or whatever, and he, that's where he feels connected. And we all have to go exactly where, where, where is our part in the world to fix this part of the world. How we do it, this is just the technical part of it. The whole point is that if you really look at the main line, we all have Shulchan Aruch, and we all are, are, are Metsuvim, we're all ordered to go on the same line. Okay, so here and there it's a little bit of a Minhagim that we change, but the, 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 the main path is the same. The problem is when people start distorting that, and starting adding rules, or just taking off rules, or starting to, to, to bend the rules, that's already where the problem starts. And unfortunately, in the time that we live in, in the Choshech, such a darkness of this Galut, then it's very easy to be mistaken, and it's very easy to, that something that looks good is actually not coming from a good place, and something that looks, you know, not good is actually good. Today, in our, our generation, the Choshech, the darkness, is so strong. Choshech, kaful mechupal, that a person has to be very careful where he goes and what, who he listens to, what he passed, a person has to be smart. You can't just go to every... Unfortunately, in our generation, there's people who call themselves rabbis. They teach you shtuyot, nonsense. You can't even imagine. Sometimes I see videos online from all sorts of people. I don't even know how people believe them. Make up all sorts of weird things. Bend the, 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 the entire thing, making a, a joke out of the Judaism. They make new movements. Today is very, very dangerous. A person has to really stick to a, a, good, a good rabbi that comes from... that. that comes from a good source and the person needs to sit and study to know exactly what he needs to do and what he's not allowed to do. But in essence, we're all part of one big structure. Each one of us has his tafkid in this world, his part in this world to fix. We're all good. We're all perfect. The day that we're all going to be united, then we're not going to have any issues. Our, our problem for 2,000 years is that, we don't, or that we're not united. That's why the second temple was Nechav Bet HaMikdash, for Sinat Chinam. Because I'm smarter than you, and I'm, I'm better than you, and I'm more strict than you, and I'm more this than you. That's our problem. That each person has this ego, that he's much better than the other, and I don't like you because your skin is like this, and your kippah is like that, and your jacket is like this. It's nonsense. We're, it's uh, like little kids fighting. All right, the whole point is to become above it and to have this unity. Once we have this unity, nobody can, nobody can interfere us. So the point, the trick is to find out exactly where you belong, and you, it's very easy. It's where you feel most comfortable, where you get connected the most to the teaching, where you get connected most to the rabbi of the community or, or, or of the sect or whatever. You feel it. You, you can't be mistaken. Because if you wouldn't feel comfortable, you would just leave. And you see so many people, especially by late Shuvah, they go here, they don't like the rabbi. They go here, they don't like the community. They go there, ah, that's what I like. And that's what touches the Nershama. And then you put yourself on the right track and you hit the gas.